Right, hi guys, Luton here, back for some more Battlefield, actually. You guys probably thought I'm done with Battlefield, I'm not covering it anymore. Not the case, but I have taken a little bit of a sabbatical. I've taken a break away from that game. Um, but I do want to get back into it, because I do enjoy Battlefield, but sometimes I have like a love-hate relationship with it, where I get ground down by some frustrating things, and then I take a break, and then I think, oh, I want to come back and check out some stuff here now, you know? Now, Battlefield 1, for me, was... Again, I just I always come back to the hype. Like the hype just kills games for me. Um, it really does. The sort of the over hyping of games, the m insane over the top marketing of games, and it just pushes it so hard, and you just can't breathe for hearing about it. So then, when that game actually comes around, and your expectations are literally a, a, a high peak, you know, and a, a euphoric level, then the game is there, and you're like, oh, and then it just there's no enthusiasm. Whereas I found games in the past, like I remember Battlefield 3 coming out, and I was so excited for that game, and I could not stop playing that game. Every single day I'd be like, gotta get on, gotta get on, gotta get on, you know? I, I haven't felt like that with Hardline, I haven't felt like that with Battlefield 1. I felt completely apathetic, you know? And that sucks, you know? It's really frustrating, because I still maintain the battlefield has potential to be the greatest fps you know the the you know the high stability of the game the high frame rate and everything the fact that it has a really good development community behind it um and i say community not studio because i'm talking today a little bit about the cte and the cte is now here with battlefield one which is a positive thing now i'm going to talk uh, on some other videos about things that i want to see happen in the next game and if that will happen it probably will not happen but you know we've talked loads before about they should encourage teamwork more we want to see this more i do feel like that has happened somewhat through battlefield one of course you know i see this in the game itself and through some of the media surrounding it but I really don't feel like it's gone far enough. And you see this in the player base, in the games. It just does not happen. And it, it is fundamental to the game. I think it's very difficult necessarily to pin down exactly what you may point to and say like this is the problem that must be fixed because i think there's a myriad of issues one of the biggest issues i think in general is actually nothing really to do with the game itself but more to do with the way that people play games now i think that that has a significant impact on how a game like battlefield feels i've said this before that the way games like battlefield 2 and even bad company were played out was a very different time in gaming i mean we are really talking like 10 years ago it's a long time and i think gaming has altered greatly the mentality around specifically fps gaming has altered greatly um some of the guys that i play games with and some of the guys that i play battlefield with who are very very high skill players and have played battlefield for a very long time all pretty much say the same thing in the consensus which is that there is no incentive to learn uh, there is no incentive to become better because the game kind of continually dilutes continually uh, enables it to be played by anybody because of course the game wants the biggest audience possible and they they simply lay a veneer they simply lay a gloss over that of encouraging teamwork and encouraging these things and none of it really matters because people can just like skip through it they can just ignore it they have these fantastic intros to the rounds where they tell you everything and you know say like this is what you're supposed to do and there was a time where i made some videos where i said you know we should have this we should have more of these kind of tutorials and i i genuinely thought at the time like yeah that's going to make the difference that's going to happen it's very clear to see that that is not the case it's clear to see that that actually makes very little if any difference and so you're left with a solution where you're kind of saying well look how can we try and focus people's attention more on just kind of actually fighting hard battles and getting in? Part of it's down to map design. Part of it's down to the amount of stuff you include in the game. You know, less is more. And giving, I mean, look back, Battlefield 1943, great example. Battlefield 1943 was a fantastic Battlefield game. It played so amazing. Um, and Battlefield 1943... It literally was like, jump in, you're assault, here's your gear, now get on with it, you know? Uh, I think also there was an interesting argument which would never happen, but I very much would be interested to see a Battlefield game where you don't have this kind of progression system and you have everything unlocked right from the word go. And of course the gear would have to be very much balanced and stuff. Again, we can talk about that on another video. But I think the point is, is that there's a lot of different things going on and it's very, very hard to kind of, like I say, specifically pin down and point to it. I think part of it's culture and game culture and fps culture and the way people play um you only have to look at the 
uh, the kind of unhelpful nature that the way people are like any like I mean the chat in Battlefield has always been a disaster zone so it's not really a very good point of reference but it does point to the fact that there are communities where they don't have that I think that's the thing to note not so much to note that you know, uh, Battlefield's chat is specifically bad compared to any other game, you know, any FPS ge- FPS game. I think FPS games in general uh, cultivate a very nasty and generally unhelpful community um, because people just seem to be so aggressive and so bitchy and just jumping on one another straight away and just really nasty. Like, people just don't want to help one another, they don't want to work together, they don't want to do any of that together. And it's it's a very hostile environment. Uh, compare that to other games, uh, things which are completely different, of course, like building communities, city skylines communities, different things like this, you know, and it's a very, very different community. Even Armour, which, again, is kind of like an FPS in a sort of roundabout way but I mean you know in armor I mean yeah you do still get a bit of that because you know it's just a little lads like playing games but on the other hand it's it's still a much more constructive community because people have to put time into things I think that's the point is investment and I feel like games uh, which FPS games where it's more like a throwaway like Call of Duty and like Battlefield um, where you can literally jump on five minutes jump off whatever it doesn't really matter there's no investment there there's no investment of yourself there you know and so I don't feel like people really are kind of there's nothing to lose by being an arsehole to everyone around you you know because it doesn't matter like if you're an absolute bastards to everyone around you and you swear and you fucking you're just a a complete prick you know it doesn't matter because you can just jump off you can change server you can change it up whatever it doesn't matter nobody's going to ban you from any servers nobody's going to say you're not allowed to play with us you're going to have to deal with some other shit server it doesn't matter like because people can just play 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 so you're going to find this huge maelstrom of horror where it's just like the worst of humanity it's classic just you know internet bullshit that people just have to try and deal with. And it sucks because, you know, we do remember a time where that wasn't the case. And of course, people feel like, you know, I want to get back to that. I want to get back to where we have constructive teamwork and blah, blah, blah. Look, for God's sake, for one thing that they could really do, which would just satisfy and make a big thing, stop with this fucking, like, Star Wars battlefront bullshit where it's like you can't have your own private servers. You can't have your own rule sets, blah, blah, blah. Let people have the control to make their own servers, make their own communities, so that if people want to play in that way, they can do. And then you can actually see people have constructive battlefield sessions, which are some of the most enjoyable things. If people have to just deal with it like in a big melting pot of humanity, it's like it's just not going to be anything like what it could ever, you know, or whatever it was and whatever it wants to be, you know, it's just never going to be that anymore. Um, and it's just like a really, really depressing thing to imagine that that's the way we're going to be. On the other hand, if you don't want to do that and you still want to continue on with this idea of just like everybody's in this big thing together and we're just going to push through and just whatever, then they do need to start making some really tough decisions. Um, I basically said before that I was kind of done with Battlefield and um, it's still not completely in- untrue. Um, I mean, we played quite a few games this evening. I played about six hours straight this evening of gameplay. Um, and, you know, overall, I would say not as bad as I thought it could have been, but my god, like, there was a lot of, like, bullshittery and just general stupidity. Um, just, the, the, I mean, like, the beggar's belief. Um, overall, one thing that I would say was significantly shocking to me, and we played on European and US servers, um, one thing that was significantly shocking to me was game to game, at least 50%, I would say, at least 50% of each team had almost no clue what they were doing we were playing in sort of 32 games uh, 24 and 32 it's not 64s um but of those games i mean you you could just see by the final scoreboards and also by the way that your teammates were playing in and with you and the people that you observed playing there was a lot of people who hadn't a solid clue what they were doing uh which was concerning you would imagine at this point in time the game has been out for a while. Um, I know it's still sort of New Year-ish, uh, but it's not that New Year-ish. Uh, and you would imagine as well that people just kind of generally have a reasonable understanding of the game. But no, I, I mean, we are talking like no clue what they're doing whatsoever. You know, medics that are just 100% unaware. Um, other people that are just seem to be just off on their own agenda haven't got a clue what they're doing and again you can attribute that to many many different things the bloody uh you know xp bonuses and things like this that people are chasing after things like these sort of things but you know 
it's in a bad way. Battlefield is in a bad way. And that's why I say I really think that the game is dying. I saw Level's video where he was talking about, like, the game isn't dead, here's the stats, etc. You know, I respectfully disagree. I think the game is dying, but dying in a different way. It's not just about the, the numbers of people playing. And by the way, it's good to have respectful disagreements. That's how you have interesting conversations, you know. Um, but I, I think the game is dying. It's dying in the sense that core... Um, community members and core people are just getting frustrated to the point they don't want to do it anymore um, and I know producers as well who still cover the game but are frustrated and dislike it but just feel obligated to play it at this point you know so there's a lot of kind of uh, disenfranchising I guess going on um, and a lot of that, I believe, is, as I said, I have said on multiple videos since Battlefield 1 came out, the dilution of the game, the softening of the game, uh, making it just kind of a more accessible game. Uh, and I, I mean that to sound a dirty word. Um, it's like, you should feel like you have to learn and you have to push yourself. And I just never find that to be the case anymore. Um, and the fact that the randomness bleeds into how your performance is, you know, because like I've said before, when there is so much, like you can't depend on anybody around you at any point in time, and so you never know where people are coming from, and it just ends up being kind of crazy. Um, the flip side of that is if you have a solid squad of people who know what they're doing, they can almost like annihilate the other team by sort of sticking together and just wiping them out. And that's not a good thing either, you know, it's like it sucks to be on a team where you're just rolling through people all the time. That's not good, it's not enjoyable, and actually I think to a degree that's why I get bored with the game, because it's just one of two things, you either get fucked into the ground or you're destroying the enemy and rolling over them and let's be you know that's been the case for a long time that has been the case for a long time it's been the case in hardline it's been the case in battlefield it's just one thing or the other it's hard to get balanced push and pull game sessions where you are genuinely struggling to actually get a win and both teams are really fighting for it, coming down onto the line. You know, that, that just hasn't happened for the longest time. And look, let's be real, I have been talking about that for a long time, you know? I'm not saying this is like something which has just happened. I have been talking about this for ages. I have been saying this all through Battlefield 4, all through, you know, towards the end of Battlefield 3. Hardline, of course, because let's just erase that from our minds. But, you know, I have been saying that for ages. Now, people are probably going to say, well, Luton, you've been talking about this for the longest time. Why don't you just give up at this point? Why don't you, you should drop that idea now? I basically have. I basically have given up hope at this point that the game is going to change in a way which helps to drive people towards that focus, that style of play, of cooperative teamwork, of genuinely supporting one another, and by leading by skills and experience. Um, and again, it's not to say that people that play the game are not skilled. Of course, there are many, many people who are extremely qualified and skilled at the game. But by and large, looking at a holistic general picture, that is not the case. Um, and I think that, yeah, that's just not going to happen now. But when I talk about Battlefield having the potential to be the greatest game, in my opinion, that potential is still there. It doesn't go away. You know, if they were to produce a new game, the next update, uh, the next version of the game of Battlefield, and they really drive that home, they really drive home that team play, they really enable you to have close, hard-battled rounds, not just like steamrolls or getting screwed into the ground, then you would have a really astonishingly good, addictive game. But that is not the case at the moment. But this does lead me on to today where I'm talking about the CTE. Now the CTE, the community test environment, was something which came back in Battlefield 4. And it came back in Battlefield 4 because they realised that there had been so many issues and errors and problems and just general uh, mess that was the release of Battlefield 4. Uh, and also bear in mind guys that I, I still stand by the fact that when Battlefield 4 came out I seem to not have a lot of the issues that people complained about. But there were so many people complaining about it, you can't deny it. Um, people clearly had issues, but I just didn't seem to have those issues at the time so I guess I was really lucky um, but Battlefield 4 CTE came around because of that and the Battlefield 4 CTE started off I think as a kind of bug fixing element in terms of trying to resolve issues and things that they didn't get to maybe do right from the get-go you know they, they wanted to make some elements there some changes there and it really did help improve some of the mechanics in the game uh, but I, I, I today's question really is like should we be having a CTE every single game? Now, when I woke up first thing this morning, and I, that just came into my head, and I was just like, hmm, should we really be having a CTE every single Battlefield now? Because it doesn't, you know, it's like, are you basically essentially saying that every game you ship is going to be broken to the point where you require an ongoing, uh, you know, a, an ongoing adjacent development suite where players get involved with the developers and they sort of work through and they basically use it as just like a yeah well exactly as it's described a public test environment right so 
should we be accepting that that's just a thing now? And is that a healthy thing now? From one perspective, I think you could say no. You could say this seems a bit of a cop-out, sort of, but I mean, that's probably not the best way to describe it because it's not really a cop-out, is it? It's like a, an active engagement with the community, which is exactly the opposite of that. But what I mean is it's kind of like, surely it would be far better to actually ensure that the game is resolved, signed off, checked, and done before you put it out there. But I think that is actually a fairly naive perspective because... As someone who in my real life is a designer, when are you ever really done with a design? You know, it's like you can finish something to the best of your ability, but there's always things that you want to change. There's always things where you look and you think, ah, you know, I could have pulled that a little different. I could have changed that color out. I could have made that, you know, a little bit tighter together there. Um, maybe I would have introduced a different image or something like this. You know, you're always reassessing things. And game developers are artists, they are designers, and they are creative thinkers. And so as a game developer, you're always going to be thinking, once you've put your game out there, um, what could I do to it later? Now, this kind of makes me think also of something which has been pretty amazing in the last 10 years in gaming, which is the ability to patch and update your games. Now, you've got to remember, guys, I've been playing games for a long time now, like over 20 years, and... I obviously remember where not only were games not online, but the idea of kind of updating and patching in the way we do now with games just did not exist. Um, I remember reading a very interesting sort of article about uh, Sid Meier's, who of course is the creator of Civilization, the game Civilization, and he was talking about how when they originally shipped uh, Civilization, the first game, that people would actually write physical penned letters into the studio once they'd put a game out saying this doesn't work this is broken this is bugged i want to see this i want to change that so because they had no way of of course updating online the way we do today so people would actually write letters in telling them what they the changes they wanted to see in the next game and then they'd have to wait for the next game for those changes to come in but i mean Imagine a scary world, a scary world back then, like 10, 15 years ago, where when you finished a game and you put it out there, that is it. It's like there is no changes, you have to bug fix, you have to make sure everything is as it needs to be when you put it out there. Because once it's out there, that's it, it's done, it's finished, right? That's obviously not the way we are, you know, that's obviously not how games are now. Now we're in a, a world of, of like ongoing development of games, open development of games, um, you know, Steam greenlit games, you know, games which maybe sort of just seem to be an endless continual development and never actually get to a finished state at all. Um, so I think the very nature of the way games are created, designed and um, updated has changed in a really dramatic way, but actually in a really beneficial way. Uh, it's actually, you know, I mean, of course you can always take the line, like I say, that, you know, a game should be finished and I want to pay my money and it's got to be done as it gets put out to release. And again, you know, I'm not saying that I haven't, that hasn't crossed my mind. It definitely has. Like I say, when I woke up this morning, in fact, even before I made this video, um, when I was going to make this video originally this morning, that was what was going in my head. I was like, do we need CTE? God damn it. Why don't they just fix their bloody game and get it done right the first time? You know, measure twice, cut once. But when you actually sit and think about it, that's a pretty simplistic perspective you know it really that's a really simplistic kind of uh, cynical perspective when you actually think about it engage your brain and think it's far more positive to actually have an open situation where you can make some fixes but actually develop new stuff it's not just about bug fixing it's not just about making the game kind of what they actually wanted to and didn't have time to or something like this let's look at uh, operation overwatch Operation Overwatch was the map which was community developed through the CTE in Battlefield 4. And I, you can go back and check my videos, I loved that map. That map was a good map. And it was developed really, really well. Okay, so they got the community involved in the forums, they did loads of polls, they did loads of testing, they put it out there, they listened to feedback. It was a completely open development of that map. And that was probably one of the best things I've seen actually uh, for DICE EA to do. That is one of the best things I've seen. Um, now, I will just throw in a negative here, which is that back in Battlefield 4, we were very much of the idea that the CTE was something which would basically create a understanding of changes, changes which were made, which would then continue on to other games. So it's kind of like, okay, well, we've spent the last year going through the CTE and fixing things and refining things and, you know, making changes and, and getting to a really sweet spot of where we know the game needs to be. And so now when we go on to the next game, those things automatically by default will carry on into the next game. And then we had Hardline. 
and none of those things went into the game and it was almost as if like the whole thing had been a huge waste of time and i'm going to be honest here that fucking pissed me off and it's one of the reasons why i was so annoyed about hardline because they didn't continue any of that information even though they said they did they were like oh yeah 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 we've used that as like a huge pool of information and we've done this and we've done that and then they didn't do that and it was super annoying and then they have the audacity and the gall to be like oh but now it's okay because we're gonna do like cte for hardline Oh, great. So, yeah, we spent all that time in Battlefield 4 going through and finding all that stuff, and then don't do it, but then we have to go through the whole process again? Fucking hell. Like, just, it was stupid. It was completely stupid. So that's, like, a negative perspective that you can see from that, and I think legitimately as well. But with Battlefield 1, again, the way that the game was designed and the way some of the weapons and things, it didn't really... Uh, some of those changes that we would have assessed in Battlefield 4 and, I guess, Hardline wouldn't have necessarily transitioned into a, being applicable to the gameplay in Battlefield 1. So therefore, eh, it's not such a big deal. But I do think that, you know, it's always good to have those things to refine, test uh, bugs and issues, and then maybe sort of, you know, obviously it helps them to get open testing and then put it into the game. That's a good thing. But I'm more excited about the potential for uh, open developing elements and putting them into the game as they did with the map of Operation Overwatch in Battlefield 4. So as I say guys, overall it's a positive thing, but it does make me kind of, I feel very, I feel like I'm pulling in two different directions here because I feel on the one half I'm like, is this a positive thing to get into the mentality of just always fixing over time games instead of sort of really getting them to a solid point to release? Again, I think that's a fairly spurious perspective and I'm kind of having an internal argument with myself about that. Like, is that the right thing? Is that not the right thing? Is it too cynical? Is it really naive? Uh, or is it justified? And I think I'm kind of having that internal argument. So I welcome your comments about that in the, down below. You know, is the CTE something which is basically just um, compensating for um, a lack of finish on the game? Or is it actually like an open engagement with the community to try and refine a game? So it gets like a solid point of release, but then it's refined back again. So my question to you guys down in the comments is, is a CTE CT justified? Is it a good thing? Uh, and do you like the kind of more open development of games that we have now in this age where games kind of are never really finished, they're just an ongoing development? Tell me down in the comments below. And just another word, guys, I am going to be reviving my series uh, Below the Line. Below the Line is a series where I look at your comments and I discuss around them. So this is a good video to get that in. It doesn't always apply to all my videos because, you know, in order for, in order for me to make a back and forth about your comments, I actually have to have kind of asked a question and discussed a topic. And that hasn't happened so much recently because we have focused a lot on armor operations and all these kind of things. And those aren't going anywhere. They're going to continue. But I also want to get back into making discussion videos. I want to get back into talking about Battlefield. I want to get back into playing Verdun. I want to get back into playing Squad. There's stuff like Wildlands coming up. There's a lot of games coming up and I want to diversify and get back into talking about game issues because I love doing that. Thanks for watching today, guys. Hope you enjoyed very much. If you did, guys, please support the channel by hitting that like. Tell me your comments down below. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.